have a fade out of that tune because that's such a, you know, every time I want to put on brighter and brighter shirts to hear that song. It's awesome. Yeah, please don't, Dan. You know, you have to start like, you'll get also bright in here and be like, yo, I got to put on the shades today. You know, I got to put on the sunglasses. You know, we're tanning today. (laughs) Well, we're missing, we're missing Jeff today with the sunglasses pretending to read Logistics Magazine, uh, Logistics Management Magazine. But uh, hey, brother, we got a great show today. We got a great show today. It's going to be fantastic. We are going to bring you the asset side of asking for more money and we're also going to bring you data day we got some pretty serious graphs that the beanster uh, put together for us ryan so what do you got to say for that buddy What's that? oh i'm excited you, got, you know you, you got a little shave going on you got oh yeah, yeah going I got on the mus- today, well boy. my wife is coming back from mexico yeah. today so i thought uh, i'd give her the uh actually no this is a pg show but with that being <laughs> said this is sales chatter the logistics <laughs> podcast where we aim to help ten thousand reps hit a million gp i'm your host Ryan Muhammad, aka the Logistics Month, with me is the bright color Dan Deegan. Let's hit our intro video and let's bring our amazing guest on for Data Day today. Let's get it. To the HPLS podcast. Live, relevant, and high performance information, conversations, and education weekly. Don't get us canceled, Ryan. Don't get us canceled. We can't get canceled. Right? Can't canceled. <laughs> so, Dano, like we said, yesterday was an amazing episode. Um, I watched it when I was at the gym again last night. And just to hear Greg, my biggest takeaway, there was a lot of things. But I think something that I said yesterday that really made me um, think about was like, you know, Greg came here and he seemed like much happier and much in a better space than pre- And not to say anything was wrong with the previous. It's just an intuition that I got. And it made me think, you know, when somebody truly loves what they do and they're so happy and they're passionate about it, you can see it. You know, you can see it, whether you be on whatever side of the fence it is. But, you know, it is data day today, one of the best days of the week where we give you guys so much, uh, basically some nuggets to basically take away from there. So, Daniel, can you introduce our amazing guest that we have on today for everyone? Yes, yes, I can. Data day is like eating a tomahawk steak, right? Like there's so much going on. So today we've got, obviously, our main man, Dean Crook from VAT, head of analytics. and, uh, And then we've also got Rico Muhammad. Rico comes from an asset background, trucking company, now owner operator, who's been doing this. He also has the, the podcast Lanes and Rates Rates and Lanes with Chuck Snow. Um, actually, last night at seven p.m. Um, amazing people to share with you. How do we negotiate with our suppliers as a broker? If you're an asset-based company, how do you ask customers for more money on the asset side as opposed to the brokerage side? We're going to tie that all in with data and we're going to share with you how to ask more customers for more money with data all right well welcome to the show we want to say there we are everybody so is it data or data well it depends tomato tomato man data data tomato tomato australia it's data like i could never well, that's the data. geographicality coming into play here, Dean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you gotta... <laughs> so anyways, boys, uh, we're here for uh, Data Day today. <laughs> no, just... Ryan's oh, we're... getting sick of that joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, gotta, we gotta cancel that one if we're, if we're canceled. But, gents, um, Rico, good morning. So happy for you to be on our show. What's going on in your world, my friend? Good morning. Thank you guys for uh, inviting me on. I'm, I'm coming to you live from my office, as you can see. <laughs> We are live from the field. I am actually making a delivery right now for my customers. So, uh, but I got I got plenty of time. I know I'm gonna be here for a while. So, looking forward to today's conversation. Yes, sir, hurry up and wait, Rico. Hurry up and wait. That's it. That's it. <laughs> this is uh, this is awesome to have uh, Rico on uh, because this is you know we talk about data and you know theory and uh, this is sort of real world stuff. He's on a dock. He's hauling freight. He's uh, living with traffic around you know, uh, the Southeast, this is real stuff. So it's good to have you with us, Rico. I appreciate the invite, gentlemen. Yeah. 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 All right. So let's kick it off. So, so where do you want me to start? Uh, well, start where you want. Dean. Yeah. Right, well, right at the top, you. brother. Start at the top. Yeah. The, the, the top good news is yeah. that um, spot rates have gone up again for the third, third week in a row. Like, so they're up another penny per mile. So when you take out fuel, um, you know, rates are not fantastic, but the seven day average end of the week at a buck 71 a mile. It's about 33 cents a mile lower than this time last year. Uh, our top 50 lanes bumped over $2 a mile for the first time in months. So our top 50 lanes averaged 202. 
so if you think about the national average of 65,000 lanes is $1.71, the high volume lanes, the top 50 lanes are much higher at 202. So a lot more competition for carriers on those lanes. But that's the national average. It's, it's good news that rates uh, have bottomed out, which we talked about um, on both Rico's show a couple of weeks ago and, and on this show and on our IQ show. Rates have bottomed out. We predicted they would. Our 35-day forecast now are uh, now bringing in July 4 because it's in the 35-day window. And, of course, the models are all showing that rates are going to continue to go up until July 4. Uh, again, that's normal seasonal behaviour. Nothing unusual about rates going up between now and July 4. I think the bigger question for all of us is what happens after July 4, because rates generally do drop off after that. So, um, so we're seeing more volume in the spot market, even though volumes are about half what they were a year ago, like half the volume of load posts on our load board. They have gone up about 20% in the last months. So there's more volume in the market. There's fewer carriers too, so that that's also helping rates stabilise and come back up. The produce season is sort of showing some early signs of, you know, delivering, literally. Uh, but there's a big shift, and I'd love to get Rico's take on this being a refrigerated carrier because California, as you know, has been off to a really slow start. Uh, I just looked at all the May numbers, and and maybe if you could throw this chart up, the first chart. Ryan, um, I went back and looked at May produce volumes back to the turn of the century. And um, and it was so 2000. And the red line here is California. And California normally was sort of the bulk of the volume. Um, California volumes have dropped 42% since last May, whereas Mexico has picked up 15% since last May. So what you're seeing is a big transition from produce on the west coast in California to produce along the southern border and uh, volumes have been on a bit of a tear since 2019 across the southern border. The numbers are striking. Dry van and reefer were both tight in terms of capacity last week. So dry van and reefer capacity across all of the southern border markets were tight last week. Um, Laredo and dry van was particularly good for carriers. Nogales in Arizona was particularly good for reefer carriers. No surprise there, we're in the middle of watermelon season and about 62% of watermelons from Mexico cross into Nogales and then they head up uh, I-15 into Tucson and, and then uh, head out all over the, the country from there. So very good rates uh, out of Tucson, Nogales in particular. Um, so that's sort of the, the national story of the produce season. Um, Volumes are down nationally. When you look at the net of all of this, volumes are down in that range of 12 to 14 percent compared to last year. The caveat, as always, guys, with uh, produce is um, citrus is one of the bigger crops in California. It only reports quarterly. So when you look at volumes off the West Coast, that red line will improve a little bit uh, once we get the second quarter's worth of citrus volume in and that'll be in early July. So it's still time for volumes to catch up, but so far year to date, we're behind where we need to be. And I think that fits with the overall, um, you know, consumer demand dilemma, the, you know, threats of recessions, high inflation, people not going out as much to restaurants, uh, all those sorts of things are going on. So Rico, you're in the reefer market. What are you seeing from a carrier perspective? Well, Dean, it's really difficult for me to give you an, uh, a spot market um opinion about what's going on because I'm, I'm so insulated with what I what it is that I do. Uh, my business model is a little bit different. I, I, I have a customer that I service and that's mainly where I focus my attention is focusing on my customer yeah. and providing them with value. So, yeah. so it, I insulate myself from the whims and the, and the wows of the spot market by doing so. And so I, I really can't really speak effectively uh, right. as to on a personal level, I, I look at the data and I see the stuff that you see. But on a personal level, uh, right. I really, I really can't speak to that with real authority. Do you? So that you know, we think about spot rates bottoming out. We know that contract rates follow spot by four to six months. Does your shipper, um, you know, so are you the only asset supplier for your customer? Um, and if not, are they looking at the broader contract market about where your prices should be? No, there, there. It's a few. It's a few of us guys in there uh, uh, providing for the, the customer that I work with, um, and and what helps 
is that all of the guys that have probably been supplying them have been suppliers for maybe five, six years. That is probably the, the 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 least tenured person. I've been I've been working with my company for about the guys that I deal with for about eight years. So it's a relationship. We've built a relationship over that time frame to where they they understand, I understand what it is that they need and what they require. And and I try my best to provide that to the best of my ability. And I try to go above and beyond that uh, fr from, a, from a standpoint of they, they couldn't go to the spot market and get the services that I provide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a service compromise, right, with cheap right. rates. Yeah. How did you, how, the theme? The theme is you know talking about how and when to ask for more. How, diesel prices went up a lot last year. I mean, a year ago, Rico, they were about a dollar ninety on national average higher. I'd imagine they were pretty high in the southeast. Did you just have to absorb that, or did, were you able to add a you know add something on to recoup the costs there? If if diesel prices go up for a prolonged period of time, we'll go and we'll have a conversation. Um, me and my customer will have a conversation about it. The thing that 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 I guess benefits both of us is when things when things were crazy during the pandemic, when people were getting crazy rates, I didn't go in to my customer uh, and, and, and try to beat them over the head to get more money out of them. Right. And so they appre they appreciated that. And so and then and then likewise when when you know as they say it's no fun when the rabbit has the gun. So then when the shipper has the opportunity to come back to the carrier and say, Hey, let me that you know that concession we gave you on those rates. <laughs> We gonna need that back in this song. So we, we, we kind of find a happy medium to where both of us can live with it. And and our thing is not, our relationship is not transactional. And right. that's, the, that's yeah. the difference between, you know, if we had a, tra a down and dirty transactional price, price, price relationship, it, we probably wouldn't have worked out really well for one another. Wow. Doesn't that fit in guys to all of our discussions over the last year about partnerships 100%. and relationships and 100%. leaving something in it for the next guy? That's yeah. fantastic advice. Now, Rico, did you when when things were going crazy in the market, did you have a conversation with your customers saying, "Listen, obviously, as you all know, things are going absolutely berserk out there." Um, just so you know, this is kind of the plan that I want, or was it just kind of a mutual understanding that you know everyone else is raising rates, you're not, and that's where the understanding came in, or was it an actual conversation? Because this is one thing that a lot of salespeople struggle with is. Like when things go berserk and you're able to keep costs lower, um, do you have that conversation with the customer and not necessarily like a, hey, look at me, I, I'm able to keep your costs down. So, hey, by the way, when things turn around, just remember it. Like, did you have that conversation or how did that all go? Well, just like every other, every other business and you know, our stuff is seasonal, especially in refrigerated. It's very seasonal. And, and if I was, and if I were very new or green in the game, and if I was chasing money, I would always be kind of like chasing the produce trail or something like that. And I jump off. I, I, so I've never done that. Once, once I, once I was able to establish my customer, I tried my best to stick with my customer because my game plan was, I understood that I can't be all things to all people. And that's the thing. That that's the thing. As a small carrier, as a small independent, I can't compete with the big guys and, and provide things that they can provide. But I can do something that they can't do, and I have the ability to be very nimble and be very efficient in what it is that I do do. So I can provide my customer with daily service or every other day service, and and guarantee, and guarantee that service. So. I, I'm I'm kind of married to my customer. If if I can't, if I'm on my back haul, if I'm going back to Atlanta, which is where I'm from, if I'm if I'm going back to Atlanta and I can't find anything up here, I don't worry about it because I really get enough on my rate to where it's a, a really a round trip rate uh, where it doesn't hurt me. Um, versus, well, and I just go 250 miles. That's my that's my radius of service. I only do a 250 mile radius around Atlanta, so. That way, I can be back every day and, and be within my hours of service. And so, most mega mega carriers they can't really provide that on a consistent basis. That's that's mm. that's the niche that I found within for myself that I've that I've been able to provide for my customer. So mm. when so so when you know when produce seeds, like you said, watermelon hits and, and stuff like that. There there are tons of watermelon, different things in, in South Georgia that are opportunities that I could probably go chase on the spot market side. But I don't even worry about that. I, I, I kind of stay with my slow and steady, and that insul and like I say, that insulates me from all of the different when it goes when the pendulum swings really hard one way. 
I'm not really affected by it. And when it swings yeah. back, I'm just kind of like steady. And I love that you said that. Yeah, I love that you said that so much because, like, there's something that I've uh, learned, Rico, and everybody here is that, you know, if you stay in your lane, it's the best way to do because there's no traffic there, right? So if you want to kind of go chase that spot board freight, and actually, I took a picture at the grocery store, and I actually want to show you this in, retur- in, redu- sorry, in regards to Produce Dean. Um, I was actually going to text this to you, but I forgot to. But this was strawberries at our local um, our local place. So you look at that, right? $1.67, mm-hmm. $1.87 for a bunch of strawberries. But then you look above, it's 50% off. You know, wow. so you're getting strawberries for like close to like 75 and this is Canadian, mm-hmm. right? So that's probably a lot less USD. Mm-hmm. But but then I asked the workers, how long has those 50 percent uh, been out there for? They said that they got this truckload like three days prior. Right. So mm-hmm. it didn't it didn't match with their um, their quality standards. So you think about the whole supply chain as a whole. Right. Like, how can they be profitable? Like everybody, you know, you go with the driver, you got the supplier and then you got all these markdowns and you see the same thing with meats and all that stuff. So watermelons like we like I, we were talking about like last week, like I'm still waiting for watermelons to go down. It's still eight, nine dollars for a watermelon here in Toronto. So it's crazy. It's, it's brutal. And they're not, even, they're not even massive. They're they're small. Yeah. They're small. <laughs> they're small. They're kind of like bags of chips and mcdonald's it shrinks as i get bigger shrinkflation <laughs> yeah but like the watermelons seem like they're they're uh, they're not even the size of a f- football and they're like no. nine bucks and you're yeah. like going whoa man well they taste like cucumbers too like i don't know if there's any oh, correlation so they're like forced they're forced forced to ripen right so like we mm, cut one yeah. yesterday and it was like tasting like cucumbers but not to like talk about our watermelon like you know throw some tahini on there and it'll taste pretty good but you know it's just a testament to like rico what he said like i really want the audience to pay attention to that you know everybody that's out there like insulate yourself don't go chase uh whatever's cool right now you know that you got to insulate yourself so the market's going to turn for itself and that's why dean brings the data here like regardless of we're talking about spot rates how about contracted rates rico like for for the most part he he's insulated from all that stuff and we always kind of to stay away from the doom and gloom that's kind of going on but you know dean one thing that you've kind of mentioned you know we, we got the produce and we got that chart that's kind of going up there uh for yourself is there anything uh that you you're personally seeing that might be a little bit of a change from like last year um in terms of like because everyone's kind of saying like produce market produce should be blooming right now you got flowers you got soil you right. got nurseries you, you right. got all that stuff what are you seeing on your end um by the way crystal cove are from santa maria california those strawberries um, which means if they were three days old and the two-day transit, they were picked probably last Thursday, which is not, I mean, they probably needed to move a bit quicker on the weekend. But anyway, um, I'm seeing much less capacity. I mean, I think this is always going to be a capacity story this year. I think the truckload demand, because there's so many mixed signals in the market, whether, you know, even yesterday, um, the National Retail Federation came out and said, we expect consumer sales this year to be, they used the word kaleidoscope, which I thought was fascinating because it de- they said it depends on where you're looking. Things are going to look very different, depends on where you look from. What they were talking about was very mixed signals and a very, you know, some markets will be up, some will be down. Uh, again, that's not unusual um, for a, a market that's struggling to find some momentum. So there won't be a lot of, there certainly won't be much demand, I don't think, uh, to lift the market. So the in produce season is probably going to lift rates a little bit between now and July. But the biggest story, I think, compared to this time last year, Ryan, is the number of trucks that have exited the market, small carriers. That in, in as Rico was talking about, people that pay the spot market 100%, who are exposed to all of the market volatility and all of the fluctuations in spot rates, and probably maximum exposure to cost because they're running fairly high miles, um, you know, chasing those spot loads where you don't have a lot of um, control over where you go. That's the difference. Uh, we're still losing capacity. So, we, you know, May, if you throw that chart up, this is the number of interstate carriers that come and go in the industry. The green are the carriers that are coming into the industry. The red are the carriers that are leaving. And the black is the spread. And you can see there, we've had covered this before, we, you know, the number of carriers joining went up. Uh, we had about 150,000 new carriers between the end of the pan- or start of the pandemic and uh, the end of last year. Uh, come October last year, we started to lose carriers. And since October, we've lost, um, when you take into account those that join and those that leave, it's been a net loss of about 15,500 carriers. And and this isn't all carriers. This is just the, the difference between carriers that come and go. Because when you think about, um, you know, it says there are 12,393 carriers left the industry in May. There's nearly half a million carriers in the entire industry, like Rico, that are doing just fine. 
these carriers here on this chart are the people that are in the spot market. And uh, we know that because most of them are on DAT's low board, about 83% of them. And we know that when that sort of, when you lose 12,000 carriers in the spot market, because the spot market is only 15% of the loads move, it makes a huge difference compared to Rico's world. So that's why as that red line, as that black line stays below zero, we lose capacity, that is helping spot rates stabilize and come back up because it's simple supply and demand. There are now fewer trucks to meet, you know, pretty flat demand. And uh, we think it'll be like that all the way through the summer. And when we get into peak shipping season in the fall, when demand does pick up, and assuming it does, there'll be fewer trucks in the market to meet that demand and spot rates and contract rates will start to turn and go back up. So that's where we're at. That's the big difference. If you think about May last year, Brian, you can see that we were still adding capacity, but at a, at a decreasing rate. And, and if, um, can I, I want to add something on, on that as far as the spot market is concerned. In my opinion, I it's been my experience when I was playing in the spot market. Unfortunately, most people that decide that that's where they want to be, they don't invest in the information to actually to be effective in the spot market. Yeah. So what they run into is, you know, they're, they're paying for the lower, you know, and, and this is not a pitch for Dean or DAT or anything like that, but they're paying for the lowest tier low board that they can get. And, right. and, and instead of probably paying for the highest tier low board that they can get where they can receive all the real time data, mm -hmm. real time information and understand what the rates are doing in, e in each uh, specific market and know right. what the load to truck ratios are, where they're going to and where they're unloading it. Because you, you have to understand that that's how if you're playing the spot market, you got to understand the rules of the market and understanding yeah. where, mm -hmm. where the load to truck ratios are in your advantage where you can get. We're talking about asking for more money. The, the more information you have, especially in a negotiation, the more the better you are equipped to get more money. You have to know. You have to be able to know. If you don't know enough information about your customer, you need to know enough information about the environment that you're operating in. Those are those are the key things that are going to help you be able to ask for more money. And then you got to be able to articulate effectively. If you're if you're if you got to understand if it's a strictly transactional negotiation or whatever. You got to understand how to effectively communicate what it is that you need and, and 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 to be able to convince the other person on the other end to see it your way to be able to get more money right, right. Um, and, and normally right. normally most most brokers can appreciate someone that actually talks back to them with some actual logic and some sense and not just the, the only negotiating tactic is that's the, is that the best you can do <laughs> now would you guys not think that those people that are in it and they get the lowest level load board and they don't really take time to understand the market um i would immediately say that like obviously a they're not coming in as professional as they can be but b i don't think they want to stick around because if you think about it in any business you go into um if you really want to succeed you got to consistently upgrade your knowledge in that industry and consistently understand the industry as a whole and in your silo. And if you don't, you'll get run over pretty quick. And I think that's, that's kind of like business 101, right? Like when I, I was 20, I when I was 17 getting in this industry, I just was looking for a bigger paycheck. But when I realized, wow, this industry is really good, I better learn as much as I can about it to become that consummate professional, right? It's that, it's that oh my God, I, I see a, a wave coming. So COVID's coming. I hear all my buddies are making big money in trucking. I'm going to get a truck and I'm going to make big money. Just to say, once it's done, I'll ride that wave and get out of here. You look at carriers or brokers that had a niche and all of a sudden when like, masks and gloves and all this ppe did you see the rush for people to start moving ppe and it was like everybody changed their business models just to move ppe for six or eight months right. while things were at its worst and then they're kind of sitting there going okay now there's not that rush i got to transition back well something that i saw as well it's, it's funny you say you know especially during the pandemic people were sitting around people were looking for a way to, to try to make money and, and things like that and so i saw an explosion especially on social media about these um these i call it the culture sheets of trucking you know people talk t telling you how you can get rich in trucking and everything. Yeah. E everybody has a course to sell and yeah. you got you had a bunch of people that took bad advice that jumped in didn't know didn't know business models didn't know how to run cost of operation didn't know how you know didn't understand any of that stuff 
and they jumped in and, and I tried to talk as many people as I could out of it. Don't hmm. get into this if you don't if you don't know what you're getting into because this yeah. is you're not gonna do nothing but buy yourself a job. Bro. Yeah. This yeah. and, and, and and if and, and and it's not this is a business, not a job. If you're getting it from from an entrepreneur's standpoint, this is a business, not a job. You gotta understand the difference between the two. And your your mentality has to operate under that under that same guise wow. of principle. Yeah. I love that. That's great advice. Yeah, that's hey, great uh, advice. What, on that, I forgot to mention on that last chart, and I will keep bringing this chart up every now and then. That black line has a 0.92 correlation, 0.92 correlation with spot rates. Right. So that uh, black okay. line, right? That black line has a very tight positive correlation with spot rates. Right. So, you know, the correlation coefficient or the R value is a statistical measure of the strength of two variables. And uh, I wanted to test this because this is I think as we look at this rate, this is when Rico when Rico was talking to people about not getting into the business, that black line was at its highest. Mm -hmm. Right. That's when rates are at their highest. Right. Right. Right now, rates are fairly low. So we'll, we'll come back to this, I think, probably at the end of each month. And that should give people an, an idea about where rates are going. This is fantastic advice from anybody thinking about it because I would, as Rico talks, this this applies directly to brokers too, right, guys? One hundred percent. Oh yeah, easily, easily. And you know what? I just want to go back to what, what Rico was talking about because it was a point I was going to bring bring up. Like during the pandemic, I'm I'm a big social media person, so they made trucking sexy. You know, whether it be dispatchers, there's a lot of guys. There's a certain influencer in Georgia who made it like super sexy to be a dispatcher. And you yeah. look at everybody. You look at TikTok. You look at and TikTok like watch around the video. So everybody, even people, came up to me because they knew that I'm the logistics guy in the family and I've been doing this forever. But they're like, oh, what if I just buy a truck and just put it on the road you know and it's just like what do you mean you wouldn't even just buy a truck and put it on the road well you know i'm seeing people you know everything's moving everything like that and you know you look at like the environmental too i don't know this is a little bit off topic here but dan could attest to this right now dean and rico in ontario um there's fires and they're actually telling us to stay inside the house like if i go outside it smells like burning wood outside yeah that heard so, that was telling me yeah, so it's coming in like from like South, uh, Quebec and it's into South. Like right now, they're actually telling people to get N95s. So just imagine people going through that panic buy right now, going to their Home Depot, going to Lowe's to buy up all the N95 masks because the government's literally saying, do not leave your house. But, you know, it's, it's, when you look coming back to what we're looking at to ask people for more money, something that Dan and I have talked about, Rico and, and Dino, was like, you know, present something more than, hey, I just need more rate on this. I need that buffer, right? That we need to have that conversation where we mentioned where hey you don't you don't need to say hey do you have any more in it you know like let's yeah. figure out and work as a partner um rico as a question for you like are you out of your business um is it all shipper based that you work directly with shippers do you work with some brokers what is your work, business i do work with some brokers i enjoy working with brokers as well um because it provides me the flexibility like i say on my own a lot of times if i'm if i'm coming back out of North Carolina, I'm working on trying to uh, establish a direct customer in North Carolina as well. But um, but, it, but it gives me the flex flexibility because like I said, it, coming from an, a standpoint of not thinking just as this is my job, but I'm thinking as a business owner, okay, if I get a customer, if I decide I'm going to take a week off or two weeks off, my customer business doesn't stop. So what do I, do I have a contingency plan in place? Am I going to have broker's license or Am I going to have a, a situation to where I can I can uh, mitigate being able to take time off and, and then not affect my customer? And then because if I take time off and I'm not there to service my customer, then they may somebody else may be easily come in and be like, well, hey, since he couldn't do it, I can do it. Yeah. And, it, you know, it takes it takes a long time to gain a customer. It doesn't take but a second to lose one. <laughs> so Rico. coming at but, but, but coming yeah. at it from a value, the, the thing about it asking more money what other value can you provide you got to look for look for where you can provide value and and don't really necessarily bring up money as, as the first uh as the first uh, uh topic of negotiating just to think about the value and then reiterate to the person the value that, that if you're negotiating with somebody reiterate the value that it is that you're that you're bringing that that, that, that but the value that you perceive you bring and it's got to actually be valuable to the person that's paying the bill <laughs> so it's interesting cat's got to go but uh she's got uh probably got a load for you there rico <laughs> you know, it's, there you uh, go. Cat, that's how it works 
Yeah, that does, that does. But hey, um, so we were talking, uh, I mean, think about presentation, right? So, you know, a lot of people get into business. Rico's got a uniform on. He's got Crescent Carriers on his lapel. Uh, he's got a fantastic looking, uh, is it is it red freight line? Is uh, it red or? Bur Burgundy freight line. A good thing that we weren't doing the show last week. Somebody actually backed into my side over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, you, know, you know what? I'm sitting in the very dot where it happened that last week. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? You is know is what your I truck at? fixed, Rico? Is your truck fixed right yeah. now? No, it's not. I got it. I'm, I'm not working yet. on. I'm, I'm waiting on. I'm talking with Freightliner right now. Uh, to, yeah. I got about fifteen thousand dollars worth of damage. Um, I'm waiting on Freightliner See? to get the parts and stuff in, yeah. so that and then and then I'm gonna have to go to Ryder and get me a rental truck. And so it's. Uh, but that's a that's a whole other thing, you know. Because my because. That's a that's a me problem. I can't. I don't want my customer to serve to, to suffer yeah. because that's yeah. a me problem. And that's a, so most people will think about things and they'll be like, "Well, my truck is down. What am I supposed to do? I don't have. I don't. If, if you haven't taken the time out to go and establish a um, a, a relationship with Ryder or or whoever it is that you can rent a truck from yeah. and, and before things like this happen and you get stuck, now now you you can't provide service to your customer now. You, you now you look like you're unprofessional and it's, it's and like i say this is not a job this is this this is a business exactly and that's the difference <laughs> rico anyone that's in this to buy themselves a job wouldn't have the money to do that repair right and now yeah. you you know because you're running it as a business because this is what it is and you know the future you're you know like this right. is just that's why I asked if you got it fixed yet, because it was one of those things where it probably aggravates the heck out of you every day when you have to look at that yeah. damage on the side of your truck, right? Just like aggravating. When you pull into a customer, you kind of wish you could pull in on the passenger side instead of the driver's side, because the driver's side has damage. Like, like these are things as a business owner who cares about the image, who cares about the branding, who cares about your credibility. These are things you really care about. And I That's would imagine we, we've just met, but I can imagine you're probably frustrated to heck that it's not already in the shop getting fixed and you want your truck back crisp, clean and, and pristine. That's that's a big thing. That's a huge, huge thing. Um, you, you, like you said, and, and, you know, some people talk about the guys that drive around. I, I mean, I'm not a big I, I enjoy looking at the pretty large car trucks and everything. They, they are they, they are awesome. I drive a Freightliner Cascadia. I'm in it for the I'm in it for the efficiency, the fuel mileage, so on and so forth. So I'm I'm, I'm trying to run a business. But the guys that the guys that like 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 Dean that has the you know the nice big pretty large cars and everything like that. You know sometimes just because they drive something like that, they they can charge a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this. But, but you know no, what I love? Yeah, absolutely right. I try I try to um, I try to have the image of truck so i have i have i have my own uniform i have a uniform i wear my uniform to work i try to look, present myself as professional I, I, I try to come make sure i'm clean uh you know get, don't get out of the truck with flip-flops on and stuff like that you know it look like i'm going to the beach somewhere uh, i try to make sure that my equipment's clean uh and maintained and, and, you know i'm not coming in here into my customers lot uh, leaking, leaking all all over the place, lift, lifting the hood every five minutes, trying to do some kind of repair or something to my truck. It's it's just I, I try to present the image of the big of the big carriers that that have their stuff together. And even though I'm a small guy, but I but I but I try to present that hey, this guy kind of has it together. Yeah. To and uh, and we know we know the inside of your truck is spotless because that air hose over your right shoulder is a dead giveaway. <laughs> I, I know what you're scene. doing. You're squirting air all over the place all the time, <laughs> yeah. aren't you? Yeah, he's got the PS Five. Well, you know everything that you just said here, uh, Rico, is so important. You know, you you present yourself like you know as a true professional. And you know, Dean, I was reading one of your blog posts uh, this week, and it was talking about you know this is a really serious time for everyone on the road, mm -hmm. including truckers, yeah. right? And we're talking about the hundred uh, days of of summer, essentially. Can you talk a little bit about that because I think it's a great topic to actually touch on while we actually have a driver with us here right now, and who could actually maybe like uh provide some advice towards that yeah it's it's called the hundred deadly days of summer um when i did uh data analytics for when i worked at omnitracks we would always look at truck accident data and they always increased in summer which was kind of counterintuitive right um and you would think well why would accidents? they're different accidents are different in summer they're very different to winter accidents people think accidents increase in winter no they increase in summer because you've got more people driving 
you got more people partying, you got more kids out of school, you got more kids, you know, taking all sorts of stimulants. Um, but the bigger reason, and NHTSA and FMCSA missed it in their data, the bigger reason is people get less sleep. And because mm. you've got 16 hours of sunlight versus nine here in Boston, for example, if you have more sunlight, sleep is later each night. And then you get up to go to work at the same time each morning because we want to have fun in summer and we want to live a life. But um, accidents go up substantially, mostly for teenagers. Teenagers make very poor decisions when they're sleep deprived. Um, they just don't have the scope, the experience that we do. Um, the average, I'll just quote you some numbers here. On, on average, um, uh, during the 100 deadly days of summer between Memorial and Labor Day, uh, on average, almost 700 people die yearly in crashes involving teen drivers. But the average number of deaths from crashes involving teen drivers was 17% higher per day than any other days of the year during the 100 deadly days of summer. Um, so it's just it, it just means there's more cars on the road, but it's disproportionately skewed towards teenagers in particular, who a lot of us have as kids. Uh, we've got to be you know mindful of that. But for Rico, Rico's out there driving with them, and summer is summer is very different for a lot of drivers because he's he's got to drive for everybody else on the road, not not just himself. Uh, the fact that he's survived so long on the road is, is you know, tells you a lot about his ability. But it's one of the challenges in summer is people people doing crazy things anyway on the road. I think in summer it's probably a little bit more exaggerated because you've got so much more traffic. Yes, yeah, and with that traffic comes people that have no idea how long it takes a truck to stop and how long how much distance you should get between and all that kind of jazz. Mm. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. And you got more and more new drivers that are coming on the road. That they get just getting normally. This is the time of year. Uh, children when they're getting out of school are actually getting their license for the first time. Got the got the keys. Right. To, got the keys to the car and and uh, yep. and and out 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 inexperienced and just uh, don't understand the power it is that they are actually mm. uh, ro rolling with. Yeah. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that, Rico, but you're right. Kids are just getting out of school, but they're getting their license and driving on the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or the ones yeah. that were off at college and just kind of drove from dorm to the university yeah. or whatever. Now they're back home and now they're driving yeah. everywhere, including going up to see their friends and everything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, even it just you can see it just on the 401. You know, it used to be wintertime. It was kind of like two o'clock where things started to get busy. Now it's almost like 11, 30, 12, where things are just jammed all over the place. It's yeah. crazy. Right. That's yeah, and, and, and I'd like to uh, um, make a suggestion for, for people, guys and girls that are out there when it comes to uh, talking about information. I'm real huge on information. And especially if you're a driver, get make sure you got an Audible account. Go get go download audio books and, and get informed about different things but the number one thing negotiating uh there's a really great book out there called never split the difference uh i forget the name of the author. chris voss really, yeah chris really, voss. really really great book by uh ex uh, fbi profiler um man it, it's a good book on negotiating another good book uh, um is never eat alone um talks about the art of negotiating and stuff like that how, how to how to conduct yourself in meetings and stuff like that. So different little things like that that can avail yourself to more information and, and can change, help with your mind shifts, mindset shift when it comes to dealing with uh, dealing with someone else and negotiating is 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 worth more than worth its weight in gold. One hundred percent. I'm always. You must be. You must be a, 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 a automobile university guy. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. I, I used to have an hour and a half drive to work every day, and, and there was no radio. It was all audiobooks and courses right. from Zig Ziglar and stuff, and just right. always vamping yourself up. I love that. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. This is fantastic. It's been so good to have Rico on the show, right, talking oh. about real real world. Uh, we don't, we, I don't know that we've – I'd love to get you on our show, Rico, because I think just having – talking to you, I've learned so much just about how to think about the industry because we, we spend a lot of our time in the spot market, but that's not the majority of carriers. And I think most right. carriers, if they were starting out in the spot market, would aspire to do what you do, but maybe they don't know how to get there. Yeah, yeah oh, it, it, it that's takes a show some, in it, itself. It takes some discipline because I tell you, the biggest, the biggest thing when I first was getting started was – man, this is not working out. I was feeling the pressure. This, this is not working out. I'm not able to 
kind of make this thing work the way that I envisioned it working. Mm. And you start to give up on you start, you know, like I say, it's a whole mindset thing. And you start to give up on yourself. You're like, man, maybe I gotta, maybe I gotta stick with what what it is that everybody else is doing. I can't right. necessarily break off and do my own thing. But you, right. but the thing about it is staying disciplined and staying the course. It was, mm. it, it's difficult. But now I read, the, I read the rewards of being having the benefit of being home almost every day, if not every every other day. You know, mm. sometimes hours of service or whatever don't allow me to exactly make it back home because like i say these guys don't get in no hurry unloading me up here but, uh, <laughs> but at, the, at the same time like i say I, I if i'm not home tonight i'll be home first thing in the morning you know early right. early in the morning and and right. for me that's that's my that's that's for me that's what i enjoy i enjoy i've been out on the road been gone months at a time been that done that got the t-shirt now I prefer a little bit more of a, uh, ah. a little bit more scheduled uh, uh, home time and, 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 and mental kind of mental stability because it, that's another thing in this yeah. industry being out there like that because this is a lonely profession. Uh, mental, I, I think mental health is a, a huge mm. thing for drivers in this industry mm. that yeah. uh, that probably goes way overlooked. One hundred percent, it is. Rico, I, I know we got to get going, but I, I do have one really important question before we go. When did you make that decision or was it something that kind of clicked in your life where you made that decision to turn, you know, your business to revolve around your life instead of your life revolving around your business and being out for months on it? When did that click for you and what was the big, was there a big turning point or was it just kind of enough is enough? Well, I came from an LTL background initially. Um, when I was working for a company, I was working for an LTL company. And I was like, well, how is it that these guys can set up runs to go, you know, kind of spoke and hub runs and, and, and go go one place on a line hall and come right back? And I, I'm like, there's got to be, if you're in a big enough market, there's got to be something, um, there's got to be some, some kind of way to set up a business model to where you can do that. And I found that, Trying, I call it the dumbbell method. I, I, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Let me draw a radius 200. Let me draw like a hundred mile radius around Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, now what other market can I go to and draw a hundred mile radius around that market where I can find something enough to run back and forth between that dumbbell, so to speak? Um, I kind of got that from um, <laughs> actually through, through um, I was trying to at the time build a, a, a brokerage simultaneously with my carrier. Uh, so I, I I got a course, uh, Dave Duanell, uh, uh I got one of I got one of his courses, uh, information out of the back of a truck stop book. <laughs> but it was something at the time there was nothing there was nothing else out there. So that's what I that's what I use. Love that so much. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, I just have to like first of all, most Rico, you're awesome. I, I love. Um, I can see why you have an amazing you podcast so things like that. But what I gotta say, uh, Dean and uh, Dan, you guys can agree. Rico has some amazing lines, man. He, better than the gra <laughs> geographicality. Like the ones that really hit me yeah. today was, it's different when the rabbit has the gun and he got his <laughs> t-shirt in this. I'm like, this is what amazing. Is <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, there's a t-shirt. I've got to get one. <laughs> Dean, you got tons of you got tons of t-shirts, buddy. Let me tell you uh, the stories that you've told us, man. It's yeah. All you see is the outback and a truck on yeah, two wheels well, and might... hanging out the window like Ace Ventura. Yeah. No, it's it's uh it's my most famous line from one of my drivers. He called me at four AM. He said, Dean, I can't see out of the left window, the left mirror. I said, What's up? And he said the truck's laying on it. <laughs> <laughs> he was serious. He rolled the truck. He oh, rolled the no. truck. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Just, so Rico, before we get going here, Rico, share with everybody how they can get a hold of you if they want to give you awesome paying freight with the, that's within your two dumbbells um let them know how they're gonna get a hold of you and then just make sure that they know that you're the rabbit with the gun <laughs> well, on, my, on my social media instagram and stuff like that is it's rico ceo uh you can find me rico ceo i'm on facebook as well um crescent carriers llc is my company's name uh you can find me there it's crescent carriers llc.com we have a website uh you can check us out there you can check us out on facebook like uh we're and like i said we do the podcast every tuesday night at 7 p.m um me and myself chuck snow and we try to uh have industry experts on kind of like you guys i think hank seaton industry uh transportation attorney is going to be our guest next week coming up we talk about contracts laws and, and everything like that understanding the different the different uh hank calls it the dirty dozen 
uh, you know, different different clauses in the contract that you're not aware of and understanding what it is that you're signing before you sign it. That's fantastic. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's, awesome. That. That's such amazing things. Diener, what's going on in your life? Let's let's get to the plugs, my man. Uh yeah. Um knee replacement surgery two weeks tomorrow, today. So I'm uh I'm counting down to a world of pain. I think uh, you're gonna do the show from your hospital bed or please. <laughs> no, no, I could, I could, but uh no, so I'm uh uh our DAT cares shows on every Tuesday, so catch us 10 a.m. Eastern. We need to get Rico on our show sometime. We'll just drop you an email, Rico, to see if there's a Tuesday we can get you on a loading dock somewhere because this is fantastic having uh, real world love it, real world discussions. So, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, and we've got a good guest on next week, Chris Henry from uh, KSM Advisors. He's a Canadian, lives up in uh, Ontario. Yeah, Chris, yep. I know Chris. Chris He's I, a great guy. Chris, yeah, Chris and I used to work together at a former company. Very knowledgeable guy. Spends a lot of time working in and around truckload carriers, uh, helping them with RFPs. So he'll be our guest next Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday after, sorry. Next Tuesday is Grace Ma from OTR solutions our factoring partner so we'll be talking next week about all things factoring for those that can catch the show that's important i love that you know that's a great topic to kind of bring up so can thank you both uh you know rico this is amazing time to our first time meeting you same thing with dan and you know just the knowledge that you have and you're, you're so personal i can see why uh you're definitely successful in your business just the yeah. the professionalism and who you are and same thing with dean you know we're appreciative that we can tie in these conversations for brokers specifically into different conversations um what we're talking about with dad and stuff like that so this is sales chatter the logistics podcast where we aim to help ten thousand reps hit a million gp we're gonna hit the replay back on at 2 30 eastern time facebook YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And if you found value in this, which I know you did, whether you're a bunny or you're loading up your reaper or anything <laughs> like that, please like, share this with your friend, your neighbor, your spouse, and especially the Amazon driver who's coming to your door today because we all know that you ordered some Amazon packages last <laughs> night. Dano, with that being said, take us home, my brother. Oh, man, even if you can't see your left mirror, you got to gotta get the sales chatter live. You like that, Dean? I threw that in for you, buddy. <laughs> um, head on over to our website, saleschatterlive.com, and uh, check it out. We're streaming from there. You also get a bunch of downloads, really cool stuff to uh, help you along your sales. And Rico, thank you so much uh, for being thank here. And, and Dean, of course, thank you for being thank here. Guys. And remember, guys. We're pushing everybody over to YouTube because there's a little bit more uh, identifying and they can let you know when we go live. Scan that QR code on your screen right now and head over to YouTube, like, subscribe, hit the bell, hit the follow and all that other good stuff, all those little red dingies. And let's get it going, Ryan. Thank you, Rico. God bless, my friend. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me on.